So last time we blew up a giant rocket. Nothing to see here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. And now we're back to switches. Somehow the, the power is still working, even though we blew up a rocket into the side of the building. Well, I mean, we didn't fuck up the electrical grid, so... That's that's a good sign. Oh, man. That's less of a good sign. Yeah. Insurance is going to have a field day adjusting this. And as we established in the first game, Dra uh, Gabriel hates libraries. <laughs> I also really wanted to see if I could get up to this area, because this is an area you need to power up later on to access. But I spent a bit of time... Uh, fooling around and seeing if I could get to it. <laughs> I came yeah, pretty but... close. I came pretty close. Almost there. <laughs> and this last one is about as close as I got. I was able to run along the railing here. But you couldn't jump? What? You can't jump when you're stuck in that midair phase. Huh. Because the game treats you as, you know, in your running state, but it also does a negative ground check at the same time. I see. And then the net result is it just lets you coyote like that. Yep. I guess that's what you get for running on 10 year old code, Mercury Steam. Hmm. Physics are hard. That move may look familiar. We'll, we'll deal with him later. Uh, this, by the way, is Abaddon, continuing the Lords of Shadow series tradition of taking bosses from the DS Castlevanias and then just giving their names to generic monsters. <laughs> the same thing happened to Ulrox and Brawner in Lords of Shadow 1. Yeah, I was going to say, this doesn't look a whole lot like Abaddon in, uh, from Dawn of Sorrow. Oh, it's Abaddon. Sorry. My, my, I, I, I kept calling him Abaddon. I, I think both pronunciations are valid, but I I uh I play a lot of Persona, so I tend to hear like Abaddon, because that's how they pronounce it in that series. Also, this guy is he, it's a fun fight, but he's really easy to the point where I actually had to fight him twice in order to show off all of his attacks. <laughs> he does have so he does have one really cheap move though. If you stand right next to him during this little cutscene he immediately starts his wind-up on his unblockable attack, and you cannot dodge out of it. Ooh. So powerful, it, uh... It, it, it robbed the, our our commentary video of, uh, it, its resolution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Did I do that again? Oh, well. Uh, oh, it's the, okay. The it's final back. render will look much better. Okay, so this is from my second take. This was the attack I kept trying to bait out of him the first time. Couldn't get him to do it. Uh, sometimes, because you need chaos bombs uh, in order to destroy his weak spots, uh, he'll summon enemies if you're low on magic. That seems fair. Ah! And he also has this side swipe attack, as well as this, which you can uh, parry. And also on my alternate attack, I decided this guy was such a baby easy boss fight, I thought maybe I could... Uh, chip damage him with just the shadow dagger just for just for the hell of it and i did
Well, that was a nice breather boss fight. Let's get some upgrades. So this is the uh, the hold Y equivalent. Uh, there was a, there were a lot of complaints like early on when this game first came out that the the moves that the Void Sword and the uh, the Chaos Claws have are kind of similar to each other. And I mean they're similar in theory, but I think there's enough differences in like the subtle mechanics between them. I, I think it's more like they they come from like the same basic uh, you know combat language. But there's enough differences between them that they they're used in different contexts. Like from what I've been able to tell, the the uh, void dagger, or sorry, the void sword is better used in groups, whereas uh, the chaos claws are better for individual strong attacks. So there is a uh, enough difference between the two to make them actually, you know, distinct. They just didn't do as good a job as they could have, making them seem distinct. Yeah. They do feel like an extension to Gabriel's own, you know, style and, and the way that he handles combat, though. Yeah, it also doesn't help that some of the uh, the moves from the combat cross were given to later weapons also. Oh, hi. That's the only, like, real jump scare in the entire game, by the way. <laughs> it certainly scared the crap out of me the first time I played this. Do they still spawn if you don't try to go that way? Uh... Well, there there is a, a pretty wide spawn trigger for them. I mean, if you walk around really far to the left, maybe you could avoid them. The Seal of Alistair is really the only place where I could, could see uh, you really using them is for the, the riot mech. Because uh, the, the big trade-off to having all of these skills and mastery unlocked is that you do not get experience when you have uh, the relic activated. Oh. And when you're this under level, also I made a big mistake here. Uh, just I thought that the both of their health bars on the on that mech that I left alive were uh, were empty, but nope, it will get back up and attack you. Make sure to finish your kills. You know, double tap. You fool. <laughs> Yeah, really, the really only the the big enemies like the riot mechs are the ones where I think that at this point of the game where you don't have really don't have all the moves unlocked is where I think it would be worth using the seal of Alistair because otherwise the the lack of experience from your kills really hurts you a lot and it's not worth unlocking everything otherwise. They are kind of a fun set piece enemy though, just to wail on them. Yeah, they're also a lot of fun when you are deliberately overpowered like this using the relic. <laughs> Whereas right. if you're at you're, when you're at your normal level in this game, uh, or where you are in this uh, at this point in the game, they're not very fun. Yeah, that seemed kind of miserable before you uh, used it. Yeah, it was it was not fun at all. I I will be going out of my way, even if it means uh, grinding stuff off screen. Uh, to bring uh, max mastery on all three weapons and unlocking every move. Yeah, I, I may have to do that off screen. Hmm. Would not surprise me if the, there's not enough experience to go around. Although I did discover uh, while I was recording other stuff that Brotherhood clerics of all enemies are great for farming XP. Those are the summoner guys, right? Yes, because if you leave them alive, they will not stop spawning enemies, ever. There's no limit. You'd think they would have capped that at the uh, the experience gain off that, but hey, whatever works. Yeah, you th you think they would, but nope. Who's going to sit here and grind these guys, oh? You wouldn't know it, but that police box over there, that's the TARDIS. <laughs> I thought that was supposed to be blue. Well, alternate universe, you know, it's red. Ah. The doctor has fucked with time so much that he's actually changed the color of the police box of the TARDIS. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, there's a, a paint box over here. Oh, I forgot about this. 
There's another, <coughs> there's another mech. He's got a shoulder cannon. Had a shoulder cannon. Yeah, they all have they all have uh, two of them. They they have one one cannon. The the cannon is weak to uh, the void dagger and the other and the missiles are weak to chaos bombs. I just really like that the uh, the they that on their right arm is an anti tank rifle that also has a bayonet. <laughs> it's just it's just ridiculous overkill. You know, just some days you just want to stab a tank, you know? <laughs> I I can only assume that it's like some sort of katana bayonet. Folded 3,000 times with glorious Nippon steel. <laughs> I think he just made Otacon super excited. Oh dear, someone get that man at least 10 towels. He's gonna need them. <laughs> just a just a random pipe. Don't mind me. Anyway, this area is also pretty poorly communicated because there. Th I was standing it right where you actually need to go. Uh, huh. A while back, but in the end, I found a collectible that I'd forgotten about over where this church is. There's. I believe a pain box way up there. Completely optional climbing section. They may be completely optional, but I do love the climbing sections just because you really get to see the architecture in this up close. Yeah, I mean, the, the climbing in both Lords of Shadow 1 and 2 were very automated, but I think the climbing in 2... It, it feels better because the, the automation feels more rewarding. Whereas it was very stiff and and uh, unsatisfactory in the first game. Ouch. Ooh. Yeah, you can use mist. Oh, right. Uh, those, those are supposed to be anti-Dracula mines. Yeah, anti-Dracula mines specifically. They didn't factor <laughs> in that he would have mist, though. They must not have been talking with Carmilla. <laughs> I gotta come clean at this point, like, and I've I've said this in the thread for this LP. Um, I'm gonna sound like I'm gushing a lot about the design of these games. It really deserves a lot of praise for for what they did with uh, the architecture design and the environments and the atmosphere of it. I don't know offhand who replaced uh, Jose Luis Vallejo as art director on Lords of Shadow Two, but whoever did that, they did a pretty good job. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so at, at the bottom of this other church, uh, that's where the hooded man went. And I have a feeling that we're going to find out a little more about this hooded man. And also, I know that I said before that the toy maker was my favorite boss fight. That's... I, I, I'm sorry, I lied. This coming up is the, my favorite boss fight in the entire game. <laughs> but how can we trust you about this? I'm being serious now. This is my favorite <laughs> fight. Not a giant ladder, is it? <laughs> Almost as good as a giant ladder. Careful. There is a tremendous power close to you. It's not the Acolyte, it's something else. Something I have not felt for. The Brotherhood of Light. Its force is affecting my abilities. I did not expect this.
Your sinister powers will not work here. The hooded man is a fucking beast. Is he a Belmont? I love his fights, and those moves sure do look familiar, don't they? Yeah, I do. He's using a fucking combat cross. What? And he can parry your attacks just as well as you can parry his. So what you're saying is this is the uh, character action rival battle. Yes, it absolutely is. mission. Well, the magic restriction is off. Mm. Oh, we've got the dark gauntlet. And we've got a parry battle. Yes. Oh, I fucking like, love this fight so much. Oh, my God. I defeat you. What is this? And he has a, a number of moves. That oh, and he's got the holy water shield. <laughs> he pre he has a significant number of moves that uh, Gabriel had in Lords of Shadow One, uh, tweaked slightly so that they work better as boss attacks. Where others failed. Okay, I hope I have enough time to talk about this. Uh, the hooded man's voice actor is Anthony Howell. Uh, he also played Doctor Jonathan Reed uh, in Vampire, another vampire game I like. Also, for some reason, he decided to use the uh, the dagger charge move. He should know better than that. That move was useless. <laughs> I'm sure he figured out ways to make it work. Uh, he completely missed both times he used it. <laughs> Where failed, I will prevail. Yeah, that's right. Stick with the combat cross. Stick with what you know. And he also stole uh, Cornell's power from Lords of Shadow One. Okay, sure. This is also much better uh, than Cornell's fight in, in Lords of Shadow One, because you have the, a b much better dash now. Plus you have the Chaos Claws. I'm disappointed he doesn't seem to have his whip anymore. Uh, well, no, that's, that's the trade-off. I guess <laughs> that, uh, once you become Godzilla-sized, uh, you, you get a power, you get an ego trip. You have to use your feet for everything and also your fist. Though I wonder where he got a duplicate of the Dark Gauntlet. Hmm. I, I guess since uh, Simon and, and Trevor were able to use the Dark Gauntlet's powers without having the Gauntlet in possession, you know, I guess they're carrying that over. Th this is only tangentially related, but I was playing Smash Bros. earlier as uh, Richter and I got the Super Mushroom. And I was legitimately curious if, like, the uh, whip's uh, oh, hitbox is Oh, we're not done same. yet. We got one more phase. Oh, hello. I get a feeling this guy's got one more trick up his sleeve. It's the Titty Demon! Titty Demon! <laughs> oh, hello. my God! And if you're, if you're playing with QTEs on, uh, this is a QTE fight. Oh, so right now it's a glorified oh, cutscene for you. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, Dracula, you're just showing off at this point. <laughs> There's no need to play Star Wars, kid.
am Victor. Victor Belmont. Commander of the Brotherhood of Light. Protector of humanity. And the last of my illustrious bloodline. We thought you were dead. I'm immortal, warrior. Something you Belmonts don't seem to understand. We're hiding people here who haven't already been infected. I don't know how much longer we can hang on. Not long. Take it. It's an antidote to the infection. Wait. Whose side are you on? I stand alone. You help me. Maybe I can help you. You are looking for the Acolytes, are you not? You know where they are? Not exactly. But I do know how we can flush them out. Follow me. So, oh for, my God! So, for those of you who don't don't know your uh, ca history of Castlevania, uh, this new Belmont is named and slightly influenced by Victor Belmont, the protagonist or the deuteragonist of the cancelled Dreamcast title Castlevania Resurrection. <gasps> If I remember right, he was kind of a washout who uh, uh, ran from his family destiny and just kind of kind of became a broke uh, gambler. Yep, that yeah, pretty much. He was like a Han Solo clone, more or less. He was sharing the limelight with uh, Sonia Belmont. Yes, from uh, and... Castlevania Legends. Yes, that's the one. Yes, the Game that, Boy one. Got it right. Yes. Well, yeah, this is not. I mean, this, yeah, this is a very, very loose reinterpretation of what little we know of Victor. Basically, it's just like a fan service thing. You know, an intent to say, oh, look, yeah, we actually do know our Castlevania lore. Hey, it's something for the fans. Don't mind us that we turned Abaddon into another generic monster. We actually do know our Castlevania. <laughs> All is forgiven. What What is this feeling? I... I I've never felt this. I think it's pure joy. It burns as us. <laughs> and uh, dude, if <laughs> that, that was just done right. That is the best boss fight in the game. Well, there it is. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Lords of Shadow 2. There's no more game after this. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>